All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We're here to talk about professional wrestling on the GSMC Sports Network. You know, so uh, thank you for tuning in. I love you guys a thousand and ten percent. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about our next segment. Obviously, kind of reiterating what we talked about. We talked about our WWE NXT review. We talked about our AEW Dynamite preview, and we also talked about the New Day. You know, breaking up some potential storylines, maybe some failures. Uh, you know what WWE has to do to kind of make this. You know, kind of make this breakup make sense. So make sure you check out those videos on the YouTube page on the GSMC Sports Network as well as the podcasting network. So um, yeah, thousand ten percent. Let's go ahead and move on. We have our segment four. We're talking about under the Triple H Paul Levesque era. Obviously, contract negotiations are going to be done differently. You know what I mean? Which is the best thing to do? You know what I mean? Letting contracts roll out. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, I have a friend who has a wife that's in HR, who's you know in the higher ups, and she says they're going to fire somebody they kind of decide maybe six months to a year in advance so you let the kind of contract kind of roll out you don't really you know kind of appeal to them a little bit you know kind of like we're not really what's happening with kevin owens because i think wwe did give him an offer then he went to you know try to see what aew would offer him obviously you know aew didn't want to match what wwe was going to give him so right now he kind of has to decide in in and itself like is it worth it? You know, is it worth it to, you know, stay traveling with these guys that I love and respect so damn much? You know, his best friend, Sami Zayn, uh, Cody Rhodes, and he's doing this, you know, with Randy Orton right now. Um, his contract is up at the beginning of the year, you know, so obviously there's still some negotiations you have about maybe like four months, you know what I mean? Which is, you know, which is ideal. Like, well, not four months. It's September. Yeah, oh, damn, three months. So you can kind of got to get your stuff together, but sooner rather than later. And that's kind of been... Um, kind of been the philosophy in terms of approaching cha- contract negotiations under, uh, you know, the Triple H fall of that era for WWE. You know, um, the co- the company has recently r- ramped up their efforts to secure professional wrestlers before their contracts expire, uh, unlike they used to do. Unlike they used to do, they used to let it run out. And then, you know, I feel like they'd kind of give them a chance to kind of test the market. And once again, this is something that WWE obviously has had an, an advantage of ever since, you know, WCW went down, ECW went down in, uh, you know, 2000 and, uh, in 2001, when you were essentially the only wrestling, you know, choice. So it was like, all right, do I take a pay cut or do I disappear off the scene forever? Like, you know what I mean? Or do I go to Ring of Honor or TNA and get paid like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars where you can be in WWE and make hundreds of thousands of dollars? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, So, you know, definitely playing in that angle is a little better. Of course, you know, WWE criticizing how Tony Khan approaches his contract negotiations, obviously with that Swerve Strickland contract, Will Ospreay, Mercedes Monet, and Kazuchika Okada, obviously, you know, they got paid big bucks. But uh, overall, I feel like WWE, they're kind of doing this to kind of protect their own asses. You know, like they could go out to bigger and better things. Like, look at what happened with AEW as soon as Ricochet joined. And like, it's uh, it only takes a couple more pieces. It only takes a couple more pieces for, you know, something, um, you know, just for people to feel like, of course, there's always in the money aspects in terms of finding a job. You know, in terms of picking a job, you know, if, uh, you know, if you, you know, if you're testing two companies that you get an interview for and you get accepted about both of them, and you're like, you know, kind of got away the, the pros and cons a little bit. You know, sometimes people do sacrifice the money aspect just for comfortability. You know, you work with a bunch of great people like, you know, I mean, no one's really a, no one's really a jerk or an a-hole or anything like that. But on the other hand, you can be paid, be getting paid more money and you work with people who are basically waiting there behind your back, breathing down your neck with the pencil, ready to stab you in the back, you know, and try to take your job. You know what I mean? It's, it's um, you know, it all depends exactly, you know, what, you know, kind of like what you want. Like, you know what I mean? In this case for Kevin Owens, I think it would be smart for him to sign uh, back with WWE because um, I feel like WWE's not finished with him yet. He had such a promising start making out of NXT. He was kind of a joke of a universal champion, which, you know, kind of tarnished his name like he brought it up on smackdown about two weeks ago to cody rhodes and uh you know obviously he doesn't forget and the wwe universe doesn't uh you know forget as well i want to see kevin owens become a champion you know i it seems right now a little dire for him to either beat cody rhodes or for him to you know beat gunther but you know 
I don't know, just like in terms of creativeness, it could be a possibility, you know, because I think Kevin Owens is liked by the by the WWE universe. He cuts amazing promos, amazing promos. He's a funny guy. He's a really funny guy. Like, it's crazy how funny he is. Uh, so a thousand and ten percent. I, I I love the way that WWE is doing this. You know, I feel like it makes for a better stability within the company, within the locker room. Everyone's not like I said, everyone's not ready to stab someone in the back because they're getting paid more money than the other person is. And it's consistent for storytelling. And this is something like just imagine you're watching a movie, you know, and I, I you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of got this. Uh, what's a good what's a good example? Terrence Howard, Terrence Howard in the first Iron Man. He was great. He was super great. I loved him. And then you find out there was some money obligations, and then they had to find a new roadie. They had Don Cheadle, which Don Cheadle, he was great as well. But, you know, just that little, just that goofiness, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just that, like, all right, you know, it's, uh, you know, kind of like what WWE did once when Kevin Nash and Scott Hall left for WCW, and then they just ultimately just tried to replace them with, like, lookalikes. And you're just like, oh, it's not really... It's not really funny. So, you know, for the storyline to work, you need the same actors. You need the same superstars because they're great. They're great at what they do. You know, they get the fans to buy your product. They get, the, you know, to buy the damn tickets, put the butts in the seats and buy merchandise and buy titles that only tonight. 45% off championship belts. Man, those things are expensive, dog. Those things got to be freaking 95% off. And maybe I might get it at like 200 bucks. Like it's it's crazy. It's crazy how expensive those things are. So I kind of like it how they're not having no more random storylines because I bet there's a lot of circuit. There's been a lot of historic circumstances in WWE where you let somebody test the market. Maybe they got a little disgruntled and they're like, you know what? I don't want to come back to WWE. I'm going to test Ring of Honor, the independent scene, TNA, CMLL, or wherever. You know what I mean? And then uh, WWE could have had the WWE universe eating out of this palms, eating, eating out of this guy's palms hands. Of course, they would always sign the big stars, but it was the middle stars, the rising stars that they were kind of like, you know what? You know, so what? Like, you know what I mean? What are they going to do? What are they going to watch? Are you going to watch uh, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling? What are you going to do? Watch, um, you know, Ring of Honor. That was my Vince McMahon impersonation. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, WWE using that to their advantage, 1,010%, that they were the only wrestling promotion. Obviously, now they are not. So this could possibly be a huge reason why they are approaching this contract negotiation with such more of a sensitive approach, empathetic. Um, I, I think it's great. I th you know definitely love it a thousand and ten percent. No more random storylines. You know the company locked down a new deal with Sheamus recently, as reported by PW Insider. WWE has been has approached the WWE Women's World Heavyweight Champion Liv Morgan, the WWE Champion Nia Jax, and Rhea Ripley. You know you can't lose those girls right now. They are literally the lifeblood of you know Nia Jax on SmackDown. Liv Morgan, eh, she kind of is, kind of not on Raw. You know I don't know why. I, I sound like such a hater, and I apologize. Ray Ripley, the future of Monday Night Raw. She's going to have that show. That's her show. And like I said, once when WWE Raw kind of goes some more edgier content on Netflix, she's going to push the envelope a little bit, you know, with, uh, you know, her entrances, her style of wrestling. She's going to get, like, it's going to be great. I feel like it's going to be great for her. Um, so... Definitely love that. Um, WWE noted, and I quote, uh, looking to get new deals done ahead of time and obviously kind of, you know, talking about how, you know, the success rate that they kind of have right now. And, um, you know, they've recently locked down contract with Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Damien Priest, Finn Balor, Chad Gable, and of course, the one recently, Bombshell. Uh, you know, bombshell right here, Randy Orton. So a thousand and ten percent. I think WWE is approaching this the best way possible. Something that they probably should have done, but uh, you know, obviously egos are in the room when you see uh, you know, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. I'm just kidding, you know. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, moving on. So our so now let's go ahead and move on to our fifth and final segment. Something we do every Wednesday. I give you guys my Wednesdays weekly wrestling news update. So uh, we're gonna talk about that. Grab your favorite snack. Grab your favorite ice cold beverage and join me here in about 25 seconds. 